Hey guys, my name is Dave, and welcome to another video. Sorry, this is poorly adjusted. So, recently, a couple weeks ago, um, was the event D23. For those who don't know what that is, first of all, you're good. I actually recently found out what it was myself. But secondly, um, it actually is a basically a Disney Expo kind of thing where they'll release any kind of content that they're planning on releasing. Specifically, Disney and Pixar are the two I want to talk about. I actually have them on my phone, prepped and ready to go, to discuss. Now, it's on a website, so... And that image probably gives away already kind of partially what's going to happen. I want to discuss all the films, cumulatively, and how I feel about each individual one. with their releases and stuff. Like, with the fact that they're being done. Firstly, though, adjust this. I should have done this beforehand, but I was a bit lax on that, I guess. That being said, let's get started. So we'll start with, like, the Walt Disney Studios stuff. First of all, Hocus Pocus 2. I'm looking forward to it, quite frankly. Hocus Pocus 2 is one of those that is a sequel where when the sequel has been known and talked about for long enough, you know it's going to be good. There are some rare occasions where this is not the case, but in this case, yeah. Hocus Pocus, the original, was fantastic. It's pretty old at this point, but it was very good. Now, that's one of several. I'm going to create short little responses to these just because of how many I have to discuss. Next up, we've got the sequel to the movie Enchanted. The sequel is called Disenchanted. And quite frankly, I'm a little bit intrigued. I did really, really like the movie Enchanted when it came out. I don't think it aged well. Like, if you were to watch it today, it would feel a bit dated. Maybe it's just because of the CGI used at the time or something. I don't know. But it does feel a bit outdated. Still had a good story and a good concept to it, though. So I can't diss it for that. Disenchanted, however, it, it, seems, very, it seems like a very used-before idea. But at the same time, I, I kind of am going... I, I went through the information on this. I don't know. It's... I'm trying to think of a word for it. It's one of those things where y you can't exactly go about it and go, this is what's going to happen. This is... I'm looking definitely... Look, like, it's one of those where I'm very skeptical. In fact, I have the same thing to say about the next one, Peter Pan and Wendy. However, this one I'm even more skeptical about for one major reason. Now, bear in mind, what I'm about to say is my opinion and my thoughts only on this. Well, that's the case with this whole video, but especially with what I'm about to say. Peter Pan and Wendy takes place after the events of the original Peter Pan story. Like the play in the movies, not the original story from way back that contradicts every single piece of media that talks about the film, like talks about the story. The movie versions and the play, Peter Pan and Wendy is supposed to be a sequel to that, following Wendy's, like, her story afterwards. I'm kind of concerned due to the fact that there is a Peter Pan-related movie starring Robin Williams called I almost said Husk. No. <laughs> Hook. The movie was called Hook. And it was great. It was under the idea, what if Peter Pan actually did grow up? It was a, in my mind, that, that movie is an extremely definitive sequel. Very much so. However, Said sequel, I don't want it to be ruined. And I'm really, really hoping that Peter Pan and Wendy do 
does not do that. When you watch trailers or see like sneak peeks of things, they don't tell you enough to be able to go, it's not going to or anything like that. If it does, I'm going to be kind of sad about it, actually. Honestly, I don't think it will. But with Disney, sometimes you never know. And speaking of unpredictable things with Disney, the next thing is a movie called Haunted Mansion. Which is a very meta thing, because Haunted Mansion is a movie that's based off the Disney ride that's based off a movie. What the heck? <laughs> um, I didn't look too much into this one when it was brought up, but... I will say I'm intrigued, but simultaneously I'm kind of concerned. More intrigued than concerned, though. The concerns don't exactly align very easily. The intrigueness, the, how interested I am in it, outweighs the concern by a long shot. I do like the actor choice, though, for the main character. I will say that. They showcased that, and I was like, okay, all right, I can work with that. However... A movie I cannot work with is the next one. Mufasa, The Lion King. Disney, you were doing so well with Lion King until you made that last live-action film. Then you butchered it. The, the animated Lion King films, the three animated Lion King film, films, and the TV series from back in the day were great. I loved them. Childhood memory was fantastic for those. Then came along, two decades later, the live-action Lion King, which made it feel like CGI was a sin. Because it was so freaking lax. It, 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 it felt like they were being so lazy about the CGI. The animals had no emotion whatsoever. I mean, compare this to the Jungle Book, the live-action Jungle Book. It was great. It had that same charm. It, sure, it was closer to the book because, first of all, Baloo the Bear. He was a teacher in the book. He was in the movie, too. Not in the animated movie he wasn't, but in the live-action he was. But they did it well. They did it right. They made it feel like the animals had emotion. Then they did The Lion King and butchered it. I am scared, frightened to see what the prequel Mufasa gives. Now, maybe I'll give it a chance if audiences are go. They did mu if audiences go. This is much better. They did a better job. It actually looks genuine. If people start saying that, then I'll give it a chance. But otherwise, forget it. That is not something I'm giving a chance to. Now, enough of the tie-ins. There is kind of a departed movie that had nothing to do with any of these others so far that I'm very interested in. I'm very... I have questions about it. Back in the 1960s, there was a movie that Disney made. It was one of their very first animated official movies. The first two were either were both Sleeping Beauty and Snow White. During D23, Snow White was one of the things discussed. And quite frankly, I'm interested. The animated film from the 1960s didn't tell very much. It told a good story, for especially back then, and for an animated film. You can't go off of much back then, because, I mean, we're talking about a time era where even the live films were like 30 minutes long to an hour at most. Like, it wouldn't work for nowadays, because nowadays movies vary from an hour and a half to three hours. Back then, not so much. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs was about a 30 to 45 minute film, which was actually pretty lengthy, especially for an animated film. But it told the story it needed to. 
everyone knows the story of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs nowadays. But it does make me wonder. How are they going to extend it and make it better than the other live action attempts? For example, Mirror Mirror. In my opinion, the better of all the live Snow White ones, still had many flaws. It told the Snow White story pretty well, but it felt like it was missing something. That something wasn't there. Maybe the charm from the, the animated film just kind of drew some bias in me or something. I don't know. There was a lot of charm to it, but it did feel like something was missing. Maybe it's because that film, along with all the other, I think there are like two others, live action Snow White films, maybe it's because none of them were done by Disney. And Disney is the one who gave it the charm in the first place. So perhaps they can do it again. But then we come around to the next film, The Little Mermaid. Now, I don't remember if the last Little Mermaid live-action film was done by Disney or not, but they are doing another, and it looks like it's going to be the same story as the animated films. But what makes me skeptical about this version is the fact that they're shifting so much From what I've seen so far, and I may be wrong, it's starting to look like it's turning into, they're, they're taking Little Mermaid and pulling in Annie. Now what I mean by that is, a ways back, there was a live action film called Annie, based off a play, and it pulled it off pretty well. And then... Much more recently, they made, they remade the same story, but replaced a lot of the details. The movie was good, but like what I was describing about what I was worried about for Snow White, it felt off. It didn't have the same charm. It was still a good movie, don't get me wrong, but it did not feel the same. It felt too different. And for me, I don't mind difference. Most of the time when something changes and, and something's very different, it doesn't bother me. But for something like this, it actually did. If you want a different example, that way it doesn't seem like I'm being biased or I'm not trying to be selective of any kind. Let me give another, another example of something I'm kind of referring to. A, a different example that might clarify some stuff. Actually, the best example is The Lion King, the movie that was brought up earlier. I was so excited to see what they would do with The Lion King. Brushed aside a lot of negative statements about it because I loved, I loved the animated film that this live action film was based off of. But I watched it, and like I said, good movie, but something fell off. In this case, as I said earlier, it's obviously listed as the CGI just sucked. It was not, it was lazily put together, as far as CGI goes. Almost as lazy, well, okay, this wasn't lazy, This that was that bad wording. Retract. Let's rephrase that. It was almost as put together as the original version of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe films. But here's a difference. The original Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, Prince Caspian, I forget. I actually forget the name of the third film. It was based off the fifth book, but I don't remember what the book was called. To be fair, the ones I'm referring to were made in the 80s. Those three were made in the 80s, so it's not fair to say that they were bad because they didn't have as much to work with. But 
this live action Lion King had everything to work with that they didn't. And yet the quality was, it felt the same. That's what felt off about it. And with The Little Mermaid, I'm afraid of that same response, but not because of CGI, just because of their choices of change. I really, really hope I'm proven wrong, because I do sense potential in it, so I really do hope I'm proven wrong on that front. Next up, we have Pixar films, which this is actually going to be fun to talk about, because I have a lot of love for Disney, but I have even more love for Pixar. We are going to be starting with the presentation of the movie Element that they're doing, which I've actually known about for a little while, not too long. Element reminds me, the way it was presented reminded me a lot of when Inside Out was first presented. I'm getting a lot of the same vibes off of it, so I feel like I'm going to enjoy it. And actually, even the presence of the characters felt, some of the characters felt like they had the same souls and mindsets of some of the characters in that film as well. And maybe even from the film onward. In fact, that one's probably a bit more accurate. I don't know. Ever since... Eh, ever since Inside Out, I'll, I have to admit, every, every Pixar film that has come out since then fantastically done. And the same statement can go for movies like Win or Lose or Elio. These two have the same response. I I have high expectations. But then come the Pixar sequels. Now it's rare. Every now and then they will actually make very good sequels like Toy Story 2 or Monsters University, or Finding Dory. Fantastic original films and fantastic sequels. The reason I say Toy Story 2, by the way, is because 3 and 4 I did not like. Well, 3 was okay, 4 was like, yeah, I'm done. It was one of those things where every time you would make a sequel, it would just get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. 2? 1 was fantastic. 2 was meh. Three was like, okay, we're done, let's move on. Four was like, nope. Now they're doing Inside Out 2, which makes me curious. I feel like they can do it. I feel like they can make a really good sequel out of this. Because I noticed one thing about Inside Out 1. It was going into the psychology of the mindset of a child who was going through a move they were not ready for. They were about to lose all their friends. They were about to lose a lot, and they were just a child. The feelings inside of her head were given physical form, but it followed the aspects of psychology in a symbolic way perfectly and beautifully. If they do this same kind of concept with Inside Out 2, but you know, as an a little bit of an older version of her, it's going to be a great movie. I have no doubt about that. But if they pull a repetitive, like what they did in Toy Stories 3, 4, and let's be honest, Buzz Lightyear of Stark Man, nobody knows about this movie because of how bad it was. <laughs> okay, that's a lie. It was okay, but it wasn't great. Still a bad sequel, though. Good movie, bad sequel. But my point is, if they pull a repetitive, then it's just not going to be good. But if they do the same thing that they did with Frozen 2 or Toy Story 2, Scratch 3 and 4, just 2, or Finding Dory or Monsters University, if they pull the same mindsets that they, they did with those four, it'll be a great film. I have no doubt about that. And then we revert back to 
the Walt Disney Studios, but animated studios. For an interesting one that I don't know what to think about. Zootopia Plus. What? Like, I, I saw that and my brain went immediately to... Huh? Like, I, I, that's all I could think. I don't even know how to approach this one. The movie was great... But how do you make a sequel out of that? Then again, I have asked this so many times with Disney that it'll probably turn out fine. But it could also bomb simultaneously. Now there is another one that really intrigued me. A movie called, forgive me if I say this wrong, Iwaju, 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 I think. Iwaju, I think that's how you say it. I apologize if I'm saying it wrong. Um, it's it's an interesting idea. Very intriguing to me indeed. In fact, this same thing can be said about the next two. Wish and Strange World. A lot of these are kind of under the category of, okay, you're giving good ideas interesting story. It's an interesting aspect that you're presenting. Alright, you caught my attention. Now show me what you got. I don't know what to expect of them. This is something I say about Disney a lot, though. Maybe all the negative negativity my brain is going through towards the ones that I've kind of turned down a little bit. I don't know. Maybe I can be proven wrong. Or maybe I'm right. I honestly can't say. Honestly, I wish the best for all these. Disney is a great company. They have strange morals at times, and strange ideas depending on the circumstance. Like for example, Star Wars, the last, the three films that they were in charge of, uh, the trilogy, the episode seven, eight, and nine, they were bad movies. But what I don't like is that instead of going, you know what, we're sorry. It's on the entire team. We can try... If you let us, we'll give this another shot. We'll go by what you suggest. Basically calling a Sonic the Hedgehog. For those who don't know, the people who def who created the films, Sonic the Hedgehog and Sonic the Hedgehog 2, listened... They, they posted things ahead of time and listened to the Sonic the Hedgehog game fans saying, we don't like this, we don't like this, please change that. But they listened and the movies did fantastic. I love both of them, along with several other Sonic fans in the world. Disney needed to do that, but instead, they pinned it on the person who was just doing their job. That's it. They basically blamed the main protagonist of the final trilogy of that series, the actress... For all of their faults. She got blast blacklisted because of their bad moral on that front. Bear in mind, this is not entire Disney. This is not all of Disney. Disney is so widespread nowadays that you, I can't blame all of Disney for doing that. Just the people who were in charge of this one trilogy. They got a woman blacklisted for simply doing her job. And that's just horrible. With that said, that gives an idea of where some of their morals stand. I could give other examples like on Disney Channel where a lot of people, a lot of people who have joined that, who have acted for that channel, their lives have gone downhill. And I find it weird how it's always either Disney or Pixar. Or not Pixar, I sorry Pixar. Disney or Nickelodeon, where this is the case. It's always one of the two. Regardless, Disney is one of the options. So I don't know. Maybe it is the mainline company. But that's speculation. With these morals, I am kind of afraid of some of the films. And where they can go. And what could happen if they fail? It wouldn't be fair on the employees. Hopefully, though, the better end happens. Honestly, 
for the sake of, not, not just for the sake of what I just brought up, but for the sake of entertainment, of the fans. Anybody who's a fan of Moana, or Frozen, or Wreck-It Ralph, or even older Disney films like The Lion King, or The Jungle Book, or Hercules. For all of you who are Disney fans, which is, let's be honest, almost the entire world at this point, for your guys' sake as well, I really hope that these films turn out to be better than the skepticalness in me presents. One way or the other, these are my thoughts on what happened at D23. I do want to clarify, the reason I talked about it, and I didn't bring up any footage, like, like any kind of content, is for the sake of, I don't believe in using that kind of content. I know, I'm a gamer, so games I know aren't as big a deal. Not even close. But when it comes to film or song, forget it. If it's a person's copyrighted song directly from the person and not used in, like, a game, forget it. It's not being used on the channel. Or if it's a movie, I'm not even going to show a second. There have, It's just not, in, in my mindset, I feel like that's abuse of other people's content. In fact, a good example of this is D9's channel. I was told that it was reused content, so I deleted everything that had anything involved with that on it. It's sad because I really liked some of the stuff that I did with them, but unfortunately for the sake of respect towards him, just like my respect towards other content from Disney, from any musician, all that kind of stuff, it's not being shown. Either way around, though, yeah, I'm going to leave this here. Thanks for watching the video, guys. If you liked it, make sure to push that like button. And so far, you can't see anymore. Okay, I'm too far from the camera to do it all the way this time. <laughs> if you really liked it, consider subscribing to the channel. If you have a suggestion of anything else you'd like me to react to, um, maybe E3 or maybe a Comic-Con thing at some point if they showcase those and allow them. Most of the time they do, so I'm not too worried about that. Or maybe talk about like this kind of stuff in the near future. I don't know. Let us know in the comments below. Um, Want to check out any other types of things that have been done on this channel? Um, I have a reaction playlist, maybe. I may have removed it. I don't know. If I do still have it on here, it'll be here. Other videos will be on this side. Either way around, I'm going to head off. Thanks again for tuning into this video, guys. And we hope to see all of you in another. Catch you guys later.